crush velour. This is the 80s in one seat. Plush velour. Everything was plush velour. Actually, folks, what we've got here is a seat out of a 1985 XLT Lariat Ford pickup truck. And the cool thing is, is this seat is actually also used in the Bronco from 1980 to 1986. Pickup truck and Bronco, if you got the buckets, got this seat. The bad thing about this is, is it's really hard to get good seat covers for these. There's a couple of companies that are making seat covers, but the exact materials and stuff are not quite out there. You'll find in the truck market that you get close enough a lot of times, but you can't really honestly get right there in the house like you can with some of the passenger car stuff from the earlier era cars. Today, what I'm doing is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna pull this seat apart, put a new set of seat covers on it that aren't anywhere near the originals, but they are in the original shape and style. I'll talk about that in just a second. First thing I wanna hit though is this. When you're going out and doing this kind of thing, there are, like I said, a couple of companies making these seat covers, and I'm not gonna go into who they are. Go out and look them up on your own. They're on the internet. You can find the seat covers for the 80 to 86 Bronco and XLT Lariat trucks. Um, but what you'll wanna do if you're gonna do that and you're trying to match the rest of your interior is to get a color swatch book first, or a vinyl swatch book, or a, even a velour swatch book from the company you're buying your seed covers from. Because when we ordered these, and I did not order these, when my friend ordered these, this is the color he got. Which, you know, is a, is a dead nuts match for the original <laughs> red that's on the seed covers. So always order a swatch book first if you're buying from somewhere that is not necessarily like National Parts Depot. NPD does have some stuff for some of the earlier trucks on up through, I think, 1979. They don't really haven't gotten off into these seats quite as much yet. They do have some things, but not much. And I would trust them a little bit better for matching colors and things like that. If you go to the original source manufacturer for a lot of these seat covers, you're going to want to make sure you do what I'm talking about, because if you don't, you'll end up with this match. And now what we're gonna to have to do with this seat cover is actually dye it to match the original Canyon Red in this truck, which will be so much fun. All right, I'm gonna now take the seat base off of this. It's a 3 8 inch bolt that holds this main assembly to the seat, but there's also another bracket underneath it. Four bolts. I believe that these seats are actually same, same to each side. So that's, uh, that's something to keep in mind of. All right, now I've got a seat clip here I'm gonna have to take off. So I'm gonna go get a flat blade screwdriver to pop that. We'll take it loose from here. And that wire runs all the way around to the handle that's right here on the side of the seat. All right, now I'm gonna take a flat blade screwdriver and pop this seat clip off, I hope. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put the C-clip back on here so as I don't lose it. Always do that if you're working on this kind of stuff. You can put the parts back where they're supposed to go. Make it a lot easier on you whenever you're working on it later. It's like, oh my gosh, what did I do with the C-clip? All right, so now I'm going to take and use a 730 seconds, which is what this is, that holds this wire in place. I can imagine that sometimes these pieces right here will break because it is just a plastic piece. I'm going to also do the same thing. I'm gonna put my bolt back in the hole. Just enough to make it stay. Roll this out. And take this and run it this way. And now, we're going to have to flip this thing around a little bit. Let me get this over here. So we got that off now. So this is all contained within itself. So it'll stay on the seat until we can get to the point of pulling that off. I'm going to go ahead and get these other brackets pulled loose. Again, 3 8 drive. All right, so what I would do now is I'd take a photograph of this, um, where these brackets go. You can also just set them aside, how they sit on the seat, like put them next to each other, like that. 
and there you go. All right, first off, I gotta take this handle, well, I don't have to, but I'm gonna take this handle off the side. This is what controls the seat mechanism. This is gonna come off so that we can take the seat cover off cleanly. Bye, screw. All right, there's a little discussion plate on this. This handle is one that's kind of typical on Ford stuff. Not in too bad a shape. On the truck that we're working on, I'm not gonna worry about replacing any of this because it's decent. I'll just go in and clean it up with some steel wool. Set those aside. I'm gonna put the screw back in the hole. <clears throat> this is a specific type of screw. It's not a self-tapping screw like a lot of stuff you see. All right, I'm gonna put my face shield on and my glasses because I need to make some cuts and I'm old and I can't see anymore. All right, I'm gonna grab my Dremel tool and what I'm gonna talk about real quickly is you can use wire cutters to take these off. You can also use a Dremel tool. I like the Dremel tool because it's just a lot more easy for me. I'm not having to go in and you know, put a lot of hand pressure on these to make them work. What I'm doing now is I'm just pulling this cover loose. Yeah, at least it get it right. What you're doing when you're working like this is you're actually trying to go in and find out wherever Ford did things. Like they have into this corner right here there is a point for putting a hog ring assembly in there's one here there's another one here and you're trying to find your hog ring points what you'll be using that for is you'll notice that when ford put this on they kind of pinched it into the corner to set it and what you're trying to do with that is get a good solid seat on your seat my only concern with this one is possibly our buns being a little worn out, but we may have to just kind of go with what we got. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the thing over on its face like this. And I'm gonna wrap the seat cover up. Everything I'm showing you now is exactly what you're gonna to need to do in reverse. We'll show you how to do it. Well, I'll show you how to do it. You want to pay attention to is how Ford did things on these seats. You'll note that there is a listing rod, what is called a listing rod down through here. And what Ford did is, is this piece was put in before the seat was completely rolled over. So you will put the listing rod here, probably first the one that's in this little deep declivity there. And then the two side listing rods will go in next. Note too that we've got some bun wear here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of foam inside the seat to take up for this damage that's on the seat. And this is from people rolling in and out of the interior of the car or truck, whichever one you're working on. And what I'm gonna probably do is I will use some weather strip adhesive to put this back together, to, to tie it back to itself, and then put some material up inside of here, some foam, to solidify this and make it a little bit nicer. But I'm gonna have to cut these out and I'm gonna probably go get some pliers to cut them out because trying to get the Dremel tool down in here is pretty tough. <laughs> All right, there's a uh, clip in there. Uh, this came out a lot easier than I thought it would. This clip basically holds the top part of the seat to the bottom part of the seat, so I'm gonna set this aside. There's a pin on the base that goes into the hole on the top part of the seat so it won't fall out yet, but it can get kind of wobbly and loose. So just be advised on that. You flip the seat over. All right, so what I've got here is, this is a case of when you're looking for things, you wanna make sure you're checking everything when you're pulling a seat apart. They actually used a very small, thin staple to staple this piece of fabric 
to the back of this plastic plate. This whole plastic plate may have been put into play just specifically so that this could be stapled over because there's nothing to hold this. As I like to say, it's just kind of in the wind if you don't have something to staple that over to cover that plate up. This is a half inch uh, bolt. And this plate should come off now. Looks like there's a, yep, and there's another staple right here. All those staples are put in there to hold this in position. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my safeties on because I'm not sure what this thing's gonna do. I'm gonna take all these off. It's probably just gonna let, just gonna fall loose and hold position. Yep. Now I should be able to lift and move and turn the seat out off that central pin in the back. I sure wish Cam wasn't out sick this week. It would help to have him here. All right, and now I've got another, I've got to pull this through here. There's another small 730 seconds on the back side. I've actually never taken one of these seats apart before, so I'm kind of working blind here. There's actually two of them. A little tip here. A flat blade screwdriver behind the bracket. There's a wedge. Sometimes that will allow you to take these metal self-tappers out when they won't come out otherwise. Okay. See now this one, the other one was a screw and this one is actually a self-tapper. So got that one and I got another one up here. And I'm going to go off camera and put both of these back in position. Now this should all come apart and I'm going to set this aside for a minute. All right, so I'm going to take the listing wires out from this side over here. Typically on these seats, there's actually places within the seat where Ford opened up the foam to make it easier to find the main wire inside of the bun area. Uh, there's one there. There's one there, and there's one, there's one that they completely missed because they put the uh, hog ring up here instead of back here where it's supposed to go. So we'll make sure we try to get it in those spots when we go back in. Um, I've already got the front one loose. I'm going to take the rest of these out, making sure not to cut the listing wire itself because that would suck. This is your listing wire inside of this case. I'm going to pull this one out if I can get it to come out easily. And I don't want to keep, or I want to keep these together. And what I'll typically do is just go in and straighten them out before I put them back in as much as I can so that they're a nice, flat, straight wire. It's going to get bent possibly when you're going in and working them, working the seats. But that's one side. And we come over here and do the other. Same procedure. Didn't get that one in the right spot either. It's one of those Friday cart trucks, I reckon. Now that I've got that cut loose, I'm going to pull this wire out, straighten it up a little bit. And I'll probably do more of that off camera. This is the listing wire for the other side. The reason you pull these two out first before you take the other one out is you can come from this direction, but if you'll notice, you would still be bending the two side listing wires if you came from this side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out now. The reason I like using the Dremel for some of the other stuff on here is it's just a real hand buster to have to go in and do this with the dikes like that or the cutters, however you want to call them. Pull the listing wire out. On some earlier seats, there's more listing wire in here, like the 68 Mustang bucket actually has a listing wire that runs all the way around the top back. And if you really want that seat to look nice, you'll make sure you get all those wires pulled in correctly. Now, the seat bun comes off. 
Now you can see where there was damage. This is your hole for the back release. And this is that spot on the side of the seat where people were coming in and out and it was already eating through the foam on here. And we're gonna try to make some stuff to make that a little bit better here in a minute. All right, I've done my seat removal. I've got all the old hog rings out of the center of the seat pretty much. Maybe some chips and pieces in here, but overall it's pretty clean. I'm gonna now look the bun over. Now you'll notice on this bun that this side is kind of falling away. Now this is the passenger side, so most people are coming out over here. So I was look at this and say that I wanna do something to repair this. This is a push point and you'll see that it comes down to here and that's what's causing it to knife. It's actually knifing through the uh, foam. I'm gonna try using some weather strip adhesive to pull this together a little bit. And then I'm gonna put some uh, other foam down inside of there to inside of the backing piece or the base piece to try to pull everything together. And I'm not sure that weather strip adhesive is what everybody's gonna tell you you should use. I usually will take a lot of heat for two things. My body, <laughs> when I do welding, and when I do upholstery. Now I'm gonna try and keep this separated a little bit, just kind of stand here and hold it. If you take the weather strip adhesive and you don't let it sit, it will not adhere as quickly. All my goal here is, is to make this to where it's uh, stuck back together so it's not a continued wear point on the new seats. So we're gonna stand here for, I don't know, three, four, five minutes and wait. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and pull this back over here and see if I can get these two pieces to set. I'm gonna probably leave this sit before I do anything else with this up here for a, for a few minutes, probably 10 or 15 minutes, I'm gonna let that foam set. That won't make much of a difference. If it was a different kind of seat cover, if I had say a 67 Mustang seat cover, this right here could show up in my final, but because this seat cover has a foam backing in it that's fairly thick and a nice heavy duty foam, you're never gonna see that declivity right there in this. What I am gonna probably do is I'm gonna flip this thing on its side and look up in here and see if there's anything I can do to make my situation a little better. And what I'm probably gonna do on this is I'm gonna stick a piece of polyfill, like a double thick piece of polyfill all the way across here to bolster this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna go grab the polyfill and throw that in there. All right, so what I've got here is some polyfoam that I got down at Hobby Lobby. You can get this stuff at places like Joann's Fabrics here in the States. Anywhere that sells upholstery stuff for household upholstery, you can get this. This is probably not what I would wanna use for most instances, but this is what is gonna be readily available if you're doing this in your house. Um, there is specific foam for automotive upholstery that you can get that is the thicker, heavier stuff, and it's usually sold by color and style. In other words, there's, this is a very lightweight. All this is going to be is for me to hopefully get a little bit of insurance. So I bought this big ass roll to use that little bitty piece. All right, I'm going to see what we need to do here because this is all going to be a matter of ish. I might, even, might not even be able to use the entire piece here. What I want to try to do is to shove this in there, get a little more depth, and probably going to have to cut this a little bit as well. Because what's happened is, is the upholstery has just fallen out. I mean, you can see little chunks of it like this all over the floor in here and on my shirt telling me that this has been eating pretty hard for a while. Like there's a little bit of a, see it's ripped all the way up into here. Now this is a factory cut here, but you can look on the back side of this and see where the foam is just eaten up. And we're gonna wanna be able to pull this over. So we wanna make sure we've got a good set and we wanna make sure this is popping a little bit too at the top. One of the main reasons I wanted to run the polyfill in here was so that we could get that to pop back up like it's supposed to.
and get yourself some good upholstery scissors. I don't know where mine are at. When we moved, they've gone missing. But I had really good upholstery scissors, and these basically cut when they want to. Okay, that's better. And that's sitting up a little bit better too. The sides are more even now comparatively. And what I'm probably going to do is go in and lay down just a little bit of weather strip adhesive here off camera to put this back on here because originally this was uh, bonded to the actual seat. You can see the form here was there and then they, um, they just put the foam in around the, the steel. So I'm going to go in and try to bond this back down with some weather strip adhesive. All right, folks, that's all we have time for this week. Next, we're going to be coming back with putting the seats together, showing you how to get a good upholstery lay whenever you're doing a reupholstered seat using prefabbed seat covers. So that's coming next week. Take a look at that when it shows up next Thursday. Also, check out the Patreon account. If we've done anything at all for you in helping you work on your classic car uh, and do a job that you would have normally not done because you didn't have the experience on it, and we gave you the courage to make that happen, you might think about supporting us. Anything is fine. $2 a month, I don't care. It's just a way for you to be able to say thank you for what we do for you. You don't have to. I'm not saying it needs to be done. Just saying it would be a nice thing if you could do it. Okay? Also, subscribe to the channel. 100,000. We're on our march to it. PDF file from YouTube that we can put on Paul's wall when it happens. We're in so close I can almost taste it. So we're looking for that to get us right over the top. So if you can like enlist your friends from college or whatever and do that, that'd be great. If you're my age, most of them are probably in an old folks home. But if they're not, they might be able to help us out. Finally, be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. It's really weird to do that by myself. Cam is oddly enough out sick this week. He was not feeling well. So he did not come in because I did not want to get whatever it was that he had. He had migraine headaches and a really bad sinus infection, which could be a cold for all we know, or it could be COVID because pff, anything can be anything anymore. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Later. <laughs>